Milan is a circuit steeped in motor racing history. So many great names, drivers, manufacturers have come here to compete, and for every one of them that have come here and been successful, just as many have come here and not walked away with the title. Fernando Alonso will enter that Le Mans folklore with Toyota, and he'll become a huge part of that history if he can help the Japanese manufacturer finally end his years of hurt here and claim a crown. Alonso and his Toyota team will tackle one of the most famous and challenging circuits in motor racing. As most of Le Mans consists of public roads, we headed out for a drive around, starting off with the famous Mulsanne Strait. So we're now rejoining what would be the Mulsanne Strait, and you can see just from looking at what's ahead of us, you imagine an LMP1 car just at full throttle down here. There's a couple of chicanes which were added because of how quick this bit of the track is. And I want to put my foot down and just go as fast as I can. But obviously for the guys that are racing at Le Mans, that is exactly what they can do down this bit of the circuit. They can just unleash those cars. They're pushing these things flat out, and yet they're also trying to get to the end of the race itself, which is part of the balancing act that they have to, they have to find. At one point, this would have been straight all the way from the top of the, this bit, all the way down to the Mulsanne corner. And we'll see there's another kink coming up that they put in to kind of slow the, slow the cars down a bit, because when they were getting to the end of this bit, they were going so fast, carrying so much speed into it that it was just too dangerous. One man who found out about that danger firsthand was XF1 driver Anthony Davison, who in 2012 crashed violently at the Mulsanne corner. He came up behind a car in a different class, hit the back of it, the car somersaulted and he ended up in the tyre barriers there. Thankfully he was okay. There are different classes having races. There's LMP1, LMP2, there's the GTs, and etc. You've got to manage your own pace, but you're also coming up against cars that are much, much slower than, than you are. And Alonso will be in the quickest class of the bunch. He's going to be managing traffic of cars that are in a completely different race to his own. And he's going to be doing it when the race is dark, he's going to be doing it at dusk when the sun's coming up, etc. So it just shows another element of the race he's going to have to consider. After negotiating Mulsanne, drivers continue through the forest down to one of the most popular points on the circuit, the Banks left-hander at Indianapolis. After quite a lot of the circuit spent at full throttle with heavy braking and then back to full throttle, this bit is the first kind of fairly technical twisty bit we've had for a while. One striking thing about this Indianapolis bit is you've got such a drop and then it's a right hander and there's this great runoff area in front of you so again another place where you can just get caught out and this is this is what it is I mean when you see most race circuits when there's a runoff area the point of that is usually that it's a challenging part of the circuit and people are going to run off and make mistakes. Here you have the added ingredient to that that they've been driving for you know upwards of 24 hours. After Indianapolis, drivers speed through the Porsche curves, which takes them back into the stadium section, where the lap starts all over again. The thing I love about Alonso doing this is it's taken him out of a comfort zone he would have been in, and working in a team of drivers where he's swapping the car. You know, he's coming out of the car, he's going to be resting, he's going to be trying to maximise performance when maybe he's still not feeling towards the end of the race, he's not feeling the same as he was at the start of the race. If anyone from the Formula 1 grid can adapt to this sort of race, it's probably Fernando Alonso and he just seems like a guy determined to prove to everyone what talent has been wasted over the last few years. That is where he wants to stand on June the 17th with his Toyota teammates. If he can do it, and if he is the man standing tall at the end of this, it's another chapter in one of motor racing's most colorful careers.